As the WNBA's historic regular season winds down, with less than 10 games remaining for each, only three playoff spots are left to be filled. Five teams led by the New York Liberty, 27 and 6, have already secured their places. And while that demands some attention, nothing like the Rookie of the Year title debate that comes with it. The fierce competition between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark has kept spectators engaged in the race. However, according to Dave Portnoy, the race is already over. On September 3rd, Dave Portnoy took to his official Twitter account and declared, they are not in the same sentence. For Portnoy, Angel Reese is merely popular for her rebounds and does little else. In contrast, Caitlin Clark excels in all aspects. Not everyone is Steph Curry. Some people are a poor man's Dennis Rodman, he added. This wasn't just about Clark or Reese. Portnoy's comments were a response to Lisa Leslie's recent remarks about the Rookie of the Year race. A few hours earlier, Leslie had taken to her ex account to share her view on the tough battle between the rookies. I don't care what comparisons you make, both at Reese 10 Angel and at Caitlin Clark 22 deserve the Rookie of the Year award, she stated. But obviously, Portnoy wasn't in agreement. For the founder of Barstool Sports, last week's Sky vs. Fever game was all the answer one needed. Caitlin Clark put up a career-high 31-point performance alongside 12 assists and 4 rebounds. In doing so, she added to the top 5 highest scores in a game by a rookie this season, all 5 in her name. It also became the first 30-point, 12-assist, and 5 3 p.m. game in WNBA history. The Fever No. 22 then received a standing ovation in the Windy City and had fans swarming for an autograph, as Portnoy mentions, on pink towels that were given out before the game. Though missing a win for the night, Reese still managed to make her case for the evening as well. With her 10 points and 11 rebounds for the night, she recorded the most double-doubles by a rookie in WNBA history further adding on to her 12.9 rebound average, which is the highest ever in the league. The very next game, she would go on to record the most rebounds in a single season in WNBA history. Thus, while Leslie believes both rookies stand neck and neck and deserve the title equally, Portnoy has all his bets on Clark. But the ROD title isn't the only goal for Clark and Reese. Although Clark's main competition for Rookie of the Year is Angel Reese, she is more focused on playoff spots. I think me and Angel would both give you the same answer, she said at a media conference before Friday's matchup against the Chicago Sky. Although many believe both are focused on individual awards, she emphasized, both of our teams are competing for playoff spots. That is our main focus. Whether or not they win the title, the debate is at its peak. Almost everyone, whether in the WNBA, NBA, or other sports, has a favorite among the two. Why wouldn't they? Angel Reese, who leads the league with a 13.3 rebounds per game average, has set several records. Despite a loss in the final battle of the series against the Indiana Fever, Reese stands at her 24th double-double. Clark is no slouch either. Since returning from the 2024 Olympics break, Clark has been explosive, achieving the first triple-double by a rookie and the most assists in a single game, 19. She holds records for the most three-pointers and assists by a rookie. Currently, Clark averages 20.5 points and 10 assists per game, while Reese averages 13.5 points and 13.3 rebounds per game. While Clark has an edge in points and assists record-breaking, Reese's rebounding is no easy feat. What do you think? Congratulations! Thank you! Simone Biles meets Caitlin Clark. 
After another record-setting night for the Indiana Fever star, Caitlin Clark is making history, and the whole sports world is cheering for her, including Simone Biles. Simone Biles was live in attendance at Gainbridge Fieldhouse, as the Indiana Fever scored an 84-80 victory over the Connecticut Sun. While Clark had a powerful showing, scoring 19 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists, a three-pointer early in the game, her 86th of the season. This broke the, the WNBA's rookie three-point record previously held by Ryan Howard. Following the game, Clark and her teammates met Biles and Olympic track star Gabby Thomas, who greeted them with hugs and smiles. The squad was ecstatic to meet Simone Biles and Gabby Thomas after our win at The Reactions the WNBA team captioned a video shared across its social media accounts. After the sweet meeting, Biles said to the camera, They were so excited, oh my god, it's like usually the boy will just pass and be like, yup, but they were so excited, that was so cool. She further commented on the encounter by sharing the video on X and writing, Everyone watches women's sports, so happy to be able to go support my first of many WNBA games. Thomas also spoke out on X, writing, First WNBA game of many. Had so much fun supporting these stars. Other stars present at the game included Indianapolis Colts quarterback Anthony Richardson and David Letterman, per the Indianapolis Star. It's no surprise that Clark continues to break records and recently set a new WNBA rookie assist record. While speaking last month about not making the U.S. women's basketball team for the 2024 Paris Olympics, she told reporters that she continues to maintain a strong work ethic. It makes me think of like, that's your time in college, and I feel like I was just a freshman in college. So it shows you that you know you gotta start working now if you want that to be your dream in four years, she said. So I think that's just that's it for me is like, you know, work hard and hopefully you can be there. Fans are buzzing with questions about why she didn't appeal her floor exercise score. Biles landed a solid 14.133, securing silver, but some eagle-eyed viewers think she might have been robbed. One curious fan took to Reddit, asking the burning question on everyone's mind, why didn't Simone submit an inquiry on floor finals? She had nothing to lose by trying. Biles' own gym, the World Champion Center, dropped a bombshell on social media. They claim Simone was most likely underscored for her routine and that an inquiry could have pushed her over Andrade. But why didn't Team Biles make the move? Gymnastics experts are divided. One fan on Reddit spilled the tea. They probably realized there was no point. E-score can't be contested, so they couldn't inquire about that. Neutral deductions, out of bounds being the main ones on the floor, can be contested, but hers were indisputable, very clearly two feet out on both the second and fourth passes. Another fan commented, You do have something to lose by trying. If she had inquired, they could have lowered her score and cost her a medal. But wait, there's more. Remember Jordan Childs? Her coach, Cecile Landy, made a lightning-fast appeal that initially bumped Chillis to bronze. But the celebration was short-lived when the Court of Arbitration for Sports stepped in. The gymnastics community is in an uproar. Some fans are crying foul, while others are defending the judges' decisions. One fan on Twitter didn't hold back. This is a disgrace. Simone was robbed and now Jordan too? What's going on with gymnastics scoring? Shchad justice for USA Gym. But not everyone agrees. Reddit user gymnastics expert Hunter Wan had this to say. Look, I love Simone as much as anyone, but rules are rules. If she was out of bounds, that's on her. We can't just hand out medals based on reputation. On Reddit, user Artar Gymnastics sparked a heated debate with this emotional post. Is anyone else struggling with Simone getting a silver on the floor? Wag. I am probably being dramatic and I am no way trying to take away from Rebecca, but I am having a really hard time accepting Simone got silver on floor. I've had a decent cry over it, and mainly because I so wanted her to finish the Olympics with that floor gold and to continue her winning streak on the floor. I was devastated after beam, but even more so after floor. I keep thinking, what if this is it? That was her last competition routine ever? I still don't think it was scored accurately, even with the two out of bounds, but nothing can be done about it now. 
I'm proud of her pushing through the pain of her calf, and I understand she probably couldn't stick her landings due to this. It doesn't seem to have bothered Simone, yet here I am a mess. My friends don't understand and think it's a bit odd a 34-year-old is this invested, so I am turning to the gym community for support. One fan, Grunt Vraim33894, reacted on Reddit and said, Would you really rather Rebecca did not win a single gold so that Simone could have one more? Every single gymnast works so damn hard and deserves that Olympic moment. Simone already proved the haters wrong. She got another Olympic medal. Her legacy is just fine. She did not need this. And Candy Coated Doom said, I wanted her to finish the Olympics with floor gold too, but she wasn't going to get it with that routine. And she knew that too, she said she thought Rebecca was going to get it while she was waiting for her score. The controversy has even caught the attention of gymnastics legends. Olympic gold medalist Nastia Liukin tweeted, My heart goes out to all the athletes involved. Scoring in gymnastics has always been complex, but we need to ensure fairness for everyone. Hashtag gymnastics reform. But amidst all the chaos, Let's not forget the incredible performances we witnessed. Rebecca Andrade of Brazil took gold with a jaw-dropping routine that had everyone on their feet. And let's give it up for Biles, who proved once again why she's the most decorated gymnast in history. Non-aesthetic things tweeted, Simone Biles and Jordan Childs bow to Rebecca Andrade as she wins gold in the women's floor final in a great display of sportsmanship. The New York Times tweeted, Simone Biles finished her dangerously difficult floor routine at Tuesday's final, and the crowd roared in appreciation of the most decorated U.S. Olympic gymnast in history. Coach Joe Lee just dropped a bombshell about his journey with America's newest track and field superstars, Quincy Wilson and Masai Russell. The mastermind behind these Olympic phenoms is giving us an exclusive peek behind the curtain. And let me tell you, it's juicier than a post-race energy drink. In a jaw-dropping interview with Seven News Sports, Lee couldn't contain his pride, exclaiming, I'm super proud. You really want to see the people who work hard and go after their goals to be rewarded at the highest level. But wait, there's more. Lee shocked everyone when he revealed, it really still feels like a dream. I am like, is this really happening? You know, small school in Potomac, Maryland. And then we started our program 10 years ago, and we just kind of built it and have amazing athletes like Masai and Quincy and so many others. One fan tweeted, Coach Lee turning a small school into an Olympic powerhouse? That's some David versus Goliath stuff right there. While another raved, Lee's the real MVP, turning raw talent into gold. But hold on to your hats because the drama doesn't stop there. Remember when Quincy Wilson was feeling the heat before his big moment? Lee spilled the tea to Sidious Magazine, saying, He's got the pressure of the world on him. I don't know anybody, any kid at 16 years old or 17 years old or 26 years old or whatever, that can handle the pressure that he's under. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more intense, Lee dropped this bombshell. Wilson was in the hospital just a month before the Olympics. Talk about a comeback story for the ages. One sports psychologist exclusively told us, The mental fortitude Coach Lee has instilled in these young athletes is unprecedented. It's not just about physical training anymore. It's about building champions from the inside out. But let's not forget about Maesai Russell. This powerhouse hurdler faced brutal online trolling before the Olympics. Did it break her? Heck no. It only fueled her fire to shatter a 24-year-old record held by the legendary Gail Devers. Fans are going wild over Lee's revelations. The hashtag Wager Lee Legacy is trending worldwide, with supporters and critics alike weighing in on this explosive story. One fan tweeted, Coach Lee isn't just making athletes, he's crafting legends. While another pondered, is Lee the secret weapon behind USA's track dominance? But the burning question remains, how many more Olympic stars does Coach Lee have up his sleeve? And can Quincy Wilson really compete in five Olympics like Lee predicts? Let's break down this mind-blowing journey, shall we? First up, Quincy Wilson. This 16-year-old phenom from Bullis School in Maryland has been turning heads since day one. At the U.S. Olympic trials, he didn't just compete. He obliterated a 42-year-old under-18 record in the 400-meter preliminary with a time of 44.66 seconds. And guess what? He wasn't done. He crushed his own record in the semifinals with a 44.59. 
One track expert gushed, Wilson's not just breaking records, he's rewriting the entire rulebook of what's possible for a teenager in this sport. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Coach Lee revealed the intense pressure Wilson faced. He's got the pressure of the world on him, Lee confessed. And let's not forget the shocking hospital visit just a month before the Olympics. But did Wilson let that stop him? Absolutely not. In a stunning turn of events, Wilson helped the USA team clinch gold with a time of 2.54.43 in the 4.400 relay. Talk about a comeback for the ages. Now let's talk about Maasai Russell. This unstoppable force in the 100 m hurdles didn't just win gold, she demolished the competition. With a time of 12.33 seconds, she edged out Frances Sirena Samba Mayella by a hair-raising hundredth of a second. But here's the kicker. Russell faced brutal online trolling before the Olympics. Did it break her? Heck no. It only made her stronger. A social media expert exclusively told us, Russell's ability to turn online hate into Olympic gold is a masterclass in mental toughness. She's not just an athlete, she's a role model for the digital age. And let's not forget, Russell is the first American to win gold in this event since 2016. Talk about breaking the drought. But what's the secret sauce behind these incredible achievements? Two words. Coach Lee, Scott Abraham, Seven News Sports Director, gave us this insider scoop. The track is his laboratory. He's detail-oriented and leaves no stone unturned. Now that's the kind of dedication that turns raw talent into Olympic gold. Lee himself shared his coaching philosophy, saying, Coaching has its highs and lows. You have your good days and not-so-good days, but it's really about the ones who hang in there and stay resilient. Masai and Quincy are very resilient. They have a heart of a champion. But here's where it gets really interesting. When asked about Wilson's future, Lee didn't hesitate to predict five Olympic appearances. Is this confidence or crazy talk? Only time will tell. As for Russell, she's quick to credit the Bullies track and field program for her success. I think it's just the coaching, she said. The coaches at Bullis had a vision for us. They had a plan for us. The standard was always there. So, what's next for these Olympic superstars and their maverick coach? One Olympic analyst speculated, with Wilson's raw talent and Russell's proven success, Coach Lee could be sitting on a gold mine of future Olympians. The next decade of USA track and field could be dominated by the Lee legacy. But the pressure's on. Can Lee continue to produce world-class athletes from a small school in Maryland? Can Wilson live up to the enormous expectations placed on his young shoulders? And will Russell continue to hurdle over the competition and her online haters? One thing's for sure, this story is far from over. As the dust settles on the Paris Olympics, all eyes will be on Coach Lee and his protégés to see what mind-blowing feats they'll accomplish next. What do you think about Coach Lee's explosive revelations? Is he the unsung hero of USA track and field? Or is this just the beginning of a new era in American athletics? Sound off in the comments below and let us know where you stand in this heart-pounding debate. You need to go. Simone Biles' message to Cecile Landy Revealed as Team USA's gymnastics coach prepares for Big Jump 2017 That's when Cecile Landy started working with Simone Biles. She was right beside the gymnast during her 2021 Tokyo debacle, and also as Biles won four Olympic medals in Paris. But all good things must come to an end. Coach Cecile Landy is now gearing up to join the University of Georgia as the co-head coach. This comes in after the former coach Courtney Cupitz Carter was fired by the Institute, followed by the assistant coach Ryan Roberts stepping up instead. But now, it's Landy and Roberts who are about to take the college forward. How did Biles react to Landy's adieu? As per the Washington Post, when Landy got a call from Roberts, she agreed after an initial hitch about the timing. She first thought that next year would be ideal, as her daughter would complete her last year of high school. But she eventually came around stating, I don't think I'll get that good of an opportunity anytime soon. And guess who was the first person to hype her up? Yes, it was Biles. The gymnast encouraged her, stating, Simone was the first one to tell me, I'm so happy for you, you need to go. Also, after Landy's official press release in April, voicing that she would be joining the Bulldogs, Biles had shown her support. In fact, Biles posted on social media, Congratulations, Cecile. I can't think of a more deserving person. 
She also assured UGA Gymnastics that they were in great hands. On the other hand, Cecile's husband, Laurent, is going to continue his association with the WCC. When it comes to Simone Biles, people have noticed that the 27-year-old is supportive of those around her. Remember how she bowed to Brazilian gymnast Rebecca Andrade and gave people an iconic medal moment in Paris? Then, throughout the years, she has been supportive of her teammates like Jordan Childs and Suni Lee. This clearly shows her sportsmanship and positive outlook. Similarly, Cecile Landy has great regard for Biles. How Cecile Landy supported Biles and Chiles during difficult times. Working with Simone Biles and Jordan Chiles closely, Landy learned a lot as a coach. Talking with Simone and with the girls, I just want them to know that they can tell me anything. I watch the body language a lot. I try to see. Then I ask, what's going on? Are you okay? Do you want to talk? The 1996 Olympian-turned-coach shared in 2023. She also gave attention to her athletes' mental health. During the Tokyo Games, when Biles decided to withdraw, Landy supported her decision. I think we try to listen a little bit more to the athletes because mental health was not real in the 90s for me. It was, you are lazy, you just don't want to do it, or any kind of things like that they would say to us, Landy recalled. A recent example of this would be her standing by Jordan Child's side throughout the Paris Olympics bronze medal controversy. When the Court of Arbitration of Sport revoked the decision and declared Anna Barbosu as the bronze medalist, Chilas was seemingly crestfallen. Being subjected to a lot of negativity, she decided to take a break from social media for her mental health. This is when Cecile Landy added a story that read, Hatch Mental Health Matters. Even before this, Landy had tried to shun the naysayers. She said, you don't have to like it, but you do have to respect the outcome and, more importantly, respect Jordan. She earned that bronze medal, her first individual Olympic medal. And to date, Team USA and Cecile Landy refuse to back down as their fight continues. What do you think of Landy's support of Jordan Childs and Simone Biles throughout the years? Let us know in the comments below. But I think personally with Olympic trials, this is the toughest meet you'll do because it is something that you are qualifying to the Olympics. Um, it's very stressful. Uh, so, you know, keeping your mental and your mind right, I think is the biggest thing. The key is honestly just what I always thought is just to have fun. Go out there, do as best as you can, you know, um, and just enjoy. It's a, it's a ride to remember for sure. She's the most talented athlete I've ever worked with, um, and so we just knew if she could get her mental game as well as her physical game, then she would be um, close to unstoppable. What's different about her mentality this go round? Um, all the work she's been doing outside the gym um, and just being 27 married she has other stuff going on and I think it helps her uh, keep a good balance you know it's not only about gymnastics and I think that keeps her sane. Normally what I try to say is you know this is I mean you're prepared just remember your preparation be, you know, be, be aware that uh, you know there's always challenges it's, it's not going to be perfect just you know do your best to stay on your feet and every day is just one step at a time that's it you can't really control the outcome We were roommates in Tokyo and I've known her for a very long time so knowing that we're in her hometown and that there's going to be millions of supporters out there supporting her I think the biggest thing for us as teammates is just to know that you know we're here to support you we're here to do everything that we can to make sure you're good and I love her to death she literally is the sweetest girl ever and I couldn't ask for a better friend honestly.